Today, we are talking about why macro counting is not a fad diet and how macro counting can help you properly fuel your pregnancy and postpartum lifestyle. Are you done with being that pregnant or postpartum mom in the gym who is always stuck on the sidelines feeling horrible, saying, how come no one ever told me this? Are you ready to finally say no to a mom life filled with excess weight, injury, overwhelm, and fatigue? Then help is here. Welcome to the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast, where we dive deep into the information you need to be the strongest woman in and out of the gym, even if you are a mom. If you are done going through your pregnancy or postpartum fitness journey clueless and unprepared, if you are ready to commit and say yes to being that badass fit mom who is shredded and stronger than before the baby, well, listen up because this is where we talk about all of the things your doctor or trainer never told you about so that you can achieve the body you want and take your athletic strength and performance to the next level. Get ready, because here's your host, Daisy Bravo. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast. I am so excited today, mainly because it's such a beautiful day outside, the sun is shining, and I'm wearing shorts for the first time in quite a while. So my stoke level is up. So I hope wherever you are, wherever you are joining me from, that you are also enjoying some beautiful weather too. This weather has got me in such a good mood that not even some yucky social media hater can bring me down right now. And I am not sure what your experience is with haters, but they always tend to get me worked up like a crazy woman. I get in my head for hours and hours and I overanalyze what they said and even what their motive was behind that. But as a part of a new me or maybe the new me of the month, I have decided not to let these haters take control of me and most importantly, my sleep. Now, I've never actually responded to this hater or even took her post down. I just kind of left it as is. I kind of thought about it for a while and I realized that maybe her comment was because she was confused or uninformed or maybe someone had wronged her on this topic previously and just left a bad taste in her mouth. But I wanted to use this hater as a learning experience and assume that she said these things because she was uninformed, that maybe because she was uninformed about this topic, others are also confused about this topic too. So today I am going to use the show to turn around a negative into a positive and use this as a teachable life moment. (laughs) So what exactly did this hater say? Well, if you are a regular listener of the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast, you may have listened to episode nine, my interview with Rachel Fryman. She's the author of The Truth About Health, Fitness, and the BS that keeps holding you back. Well, In that episode with Rachel, we talked a lot about mindset, but we also spent most of the interview talking about macro counting and macro counting as a form of sustainable nutrition. And if you missed it, then definitely check it out after you listen to today's show. So anyways, I found myself the other night scrolling on Pinterest when I should have been relaxing and decompressing, but I saw that I had some messages and figured I would check them out. Now, the pin was a direct quote from Rachel, and she said that no one is teaching nutrition as a skill, that just like you can invest a few days to learn to ride a bike or even a few weeks to learn to knit, we should be approaching nutrition the same way. It's kind of like teaching a man to fish instead of handing them that fish. So 
the title of the pin was how you can get started with macro counting. And I wanted to share with you the comments that this hater typed in. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure she didn't even listen to the episode. So I'm guessing that she made these comments based upon her past experiences with macro counting. Maybe she has a bad taste in her mouth from someone else because I just don't I just don't get it. But uh, she must have been really angry. She actually left four comments. The first one is macro counting is is not nutrition and she actually like macro counting in nutrition in uh, quotation marks and then second she says macro counting in quotes again is another made up diet nonsense okay and then like made up and nonsense were in capital letters so super scary and then her third comment is and I don't really understand where she was going this, but just said, obviously, my negative comments should not be posted. So this is not nutrition advice. I don't really understand what that one was, but thought I'd include it because she just felt the need to type it. And then the fourth one is this is a ridiculous idea. Most people will never go to these lengths. And by the way, it's not nutrition in quotes that you are teaching nonsense in all caps. So I <laughs> Like, I'm just getting a cool chuckle out of this. I hope you're getting a little chuckle out of this. I hope you guys are loving this. But it's, it's I think it's really funny what, what haters say and why they take the time to do this. But I, like, I can't believe that my interview with Rachel made someone, like, so mad that they decided to waste time and energy on boring old me. So I wanted to do my best and turn this like intense energy into a learning lesson for everyone. So instead of wasting my energy directly on responding to these comments, because of course she's closed-minded and she obviously has been burned before. And I don't think that I could even change her mind. Even this podcast episode's probably not going to change her mind. So um, I'm going to vent a little and explain macros with people who are actually interested in learning something. And if she's confused, then chances are you might be too. So the geek in me felt the need to visit the dictionary first. And so I first decided to look up the word diet, which was defined as the kinds of food that a person, animal, or community habitually eats. Okay. And then the second definition of diet is a special course of food to which one restricts oneself, either to lose weight or for medical reasons. And that can be either turned into a positive or a negative, depending on, um, you know, that diet and how one restricts or how one chooses to lose weight or what avenue they choose to follow for medical reasons. So after that, I decided, because she used nutrition a lot and nutrition in quotes. So um, I figured I needed to learn what nutrition was. So I went to the dictionary and I learned that nutrition is the process of providing or obtaining the food necessary for health and growth. And number two is nutrition is the branch of science that deals with nutrients and nutrition, particularly in humans. So I don't know about you, but when I read these definitions, especially the definition of nutrition, I, you know, I laughed to myself. It was like a total mic drop from the definition of nutrition alone. The first negative comment that the hater made, and I'm going to call her Sally from now on, um, was that macro counting is not nutrition. And I would love for her to be here with me right now so that I can kind of school her on this. But macro counting is actually the foundation of nutrition. So I kind of feel like she missed biology class or chemistry class or even just general health class in school. But because she is confused, chances are you might be too. So hopefully <laughs> you know that the foundation of our nutrition comes from three different macronutrients. That's going to be your carbs, 
your fats, and your protein. And based on the ratios of these three macronutrients that we eat and the collective calories we consume, we can manipulate these ratios and our calories to meet specific goals. So these goals can be any number of things from weight loss to weight gain to cholesterol lowering, to muscle building, to nutrient rich forms of diet. And these options are endless. So your macronutrients and calories that you take in throughout your day, when done with an intention or a goal, can really lead to many different results. Now, I am not by any means a macro planning expert like Rachel is, but over time and playing with my food, I have learned that my body thrives and gives me more energy throughout the day when I eat lower in fats and I favor carbs and protein. And that is totally me. That's totally personal. You may be someone that thrives on a higher fat diet and that's okay too. That just kind of bogs down my digestive system and and I feel sick and I have no energy and I want to go to bed. So, but however, you know, your fuel, whatever your fuel looks like, that's okay also. And that's the beauty of macros. What macro counting does is it helps you to achieve your end goal by adjusting those ratios and calories that you put in every day and makes it, and you kind of can work out the most efficient combination for you and your needs. So macro counting as a form of diet, but so yes, macro counting is a form by definition of a diet, but so is the Big Mac diet. Macro tracking is the most basic foundation of nutrition. It's not about removing certain foods like you would see in a paleo, keto, or South Beach diet, or even diets that say certain foods are good or bad, like, you know, a sugar-free, a gluten-free, a process-free diet. And it's also not about eating only broccoli and chicken every day for seven days a week. Macros actually gives you the freedom and choices around a basic framework or parameters created by you for you based upon your current needs and goals. So it's almost like instead of giving you a puzzle and having you complete the puzzle with only the blue pieces, Macro counting gives you all the puzzle pieces and you get to put them together as you like. Yes, things like donuts and ice cream are not health promoting foods. And if you're the type of person who can say no to donuts and ice cream for the rest of your life, then good on you. You are the nutrition queen. But for the rest of us who like to indulge every now and again, keeping track of macros can allow you to do this when you want to without the guilt, the hate, because you already know how that puzzle fits in. And if you get carried away, you know how to get back on track. So I am sorry to say, Sally, but macro counting is actually the textbook definition of nutrition. She also mentions in her second comment that macros are a made-up nonsense diet, but I think I proved her otherwise. Yes, macro counting is made up of science, Sally, so go back to Health 101, Kinesiology 101. Now, Sally also mentions this is a ridiculous idea. Most people will never go to these lengths, and that also made me chuckle and made me think that she was a total alien who's never met a single woman in her life. Now, ladies, I want to ask how much time, money, effort, stress, and time reading have you spent on various diets and eating styles? I'm sure you're like me and you've spent many a weekend reading a nutrition or diet book. Maybe you've spent a whole Sunday following a meal plan 
Or maybe you've watched a dozen videos comparing paleo and keto. Now, whether your goal has been to lose weight, build muscle, fuel your family, I'm sure you have wasted both time and money planning your nutrition at some point in your life. So to say that most people would never go to these lengths is so wrong. The food, diet, nutrition, and cookbook industry is huge. And it is important to take our own health in our own hands and learn and experience these things. But if her underlying argument is the sustainability of macro counting, let me burst her bubble on that one. Sure, anything can be unsustainable. Our workout goals and expectations, my desire to break dance, also known as breaking, at age 40 is probably unsustainable. But things are only as sustainable as you make it. Sure, most moms would love to work out three hours a day and have a six pack. But after a week of trying, most moms have figured out that they have to settle for maybe just 30 minutes a day. Now, me and my break dancing and desire to learn how to yodel and sing from the Swiss Alps next year was not a sustainable goal. So what have I done instead? Well, I've decided that so that I don't kill myself doing a head spin, that I'll stick with maybe the basic stand and shuffle for a while and do what I can. And I will be the best damn shuffler out there. And instead of practicing one hour a day, I'll be able to eventually only practice five minutes a day and be able to keep up with that move and continue to master that move. And then after I've mastered that, I can perfect another move. Well, the same goes for macros. Yes, at the beginning, there is a learning curve. You do have to figure out what your goals are, determine how many calories you need to shoot for in a day to make that happen. And then you need to figure out what ratios of carbs, fats, and protein your body needs in a day to reach that goal. Now, when you reach that goal, then you're going to have to change these ratios to meet whatever new goal you may have. So there is some additional work and then there's some kind of maintenance work to keep this up. But when you're learning, wouldn't you expect that? And if you can't do it all in like all 100 percent just yet, that's OK, too. Work with what you've got so that you don't have to set yourself up for failure. But what you gain from this learning experience is not something that, and it's kind of like that whole learning to fish analogy, is you're actually learning lifelong nutrition habits and a lifelong understanding of what your body needs in a day in order to thrive. So you often hear these days about intuitive eating. It seems to be kind of the new uh, nutrition buzzword. And for a lot of people, that concept of listening to your body is actually more self-destructive than anything else. Most people who need weight loss or nutrition help with cardiac issues or cholesterol levels can't really rely on intuitive eating to fix their situation because intuitively their body is telling them to supersize those Cokes and fries. They never actually have learned how to read and understand food labels or an ingredient list. But after learning how to read labels and track macros, after a while, the body will intuitively know what the body needs and what it's asking for. So no, macro counting is not about weighing your food every time you eat for the rest of your life. It's about giving your body an understanding of what it needs daily to thrive. So to go back to Sally's statement that people wouldn't go to lengths for nutrition, I really think she just needs to keep it simple and stick with a slim fast for breakfast and lunch and follow it up with a sensible dinner. 
So I want to bring this whole discussion back to pregnancy and postpartum because I'm sure you're wondering how this all fits in with macros. And I also wanted to bring this up in case Sally is listening and she wants to call me irresponsible or ridiculous for saying that tracking macros can't be nutrition or a healthy way to eat during pregnancy and postpartum. So yes, keeping track of your macros can be a great way for you to ensure that you're getting the proper nutrition for yourself and your baby. Now, this is where a relationship with your doctor and if you have a dietitian is super important. When you're pregnant, postpartum, or breastfeeding, you always want to make sure that you are fueling your body to thrive with the right amount of macros, vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. So macros can actually do just that for you. And after you and your medical care team have established what your body needs based upon what stage of motherhood you're in, you can use something like a macro counter to ensure that you're getting everything that your body needs. So when it comes to nutrition and motherhood, I recommend two apps. First is MyFitnessPal and second is the Chronometer nutrition app. And with these apps, you can input your desired daily macro ratios, your daily calorie range that you would like to hit every day. And you can even specify the exact amount of nutrients that you want to get in a day. So if you want to get a certain amount of folate, if you want to get a certain amount of vitamin C, you can actually adjust each of those individual nutrients so that you can hit those every day. Now, after you have set the app up and how you like it based upon your nutritional requirements and needs as determined by you and your doctor, all you have to do is enter in what you eat every day in the app and it will tell you if you're short on um, maybe a certain amount of protein, maybe you need a little bit more B vitamins in your diet. And it'll also give you some suggestions on how you can fulfill the rest of your day's requirements. So I love using these apps because it takes away some of the stress that pregnant or breastfeeding women have when they're trying to make sure that they're getting all their nutritional requirements. So definitely check out one of these apps. They can really help guide you with any sort of nutrition goal. I'm going to link to those in the show notes. Now, I hope that you learned a little bit more about macros today and learned that it's not really some ugly diet villain. I'm sure Sally is not here listening with us, but I hope this has answered some of your questions when it comes to macro counting and nutrition. If you want to learn more about macros, don't forget to check out episode number nine, my interview with Rachel Fryman. She is the Yoda of macros. Macros and who I recommend when it comes to incorporate tracking of macros into your nutrition lifestyle. If you still agree with Sally and think macros do not have the potential to be nutritious, that maybe they're a dangerous fad diet, and if you have more questions, let me know because I want to make sure you understand what nutrition is defined as. And as a Jerry Springer final thought, please don't let these angry haters like Sally get to you, whether it's in the gym, in the kitchen, if it's regards to your medical choices or how you choose to raise your children, just continue learning, loving, growing, and keep an open mind and always be you. And also, if you are struggling to get your daily workouts in because life keeps getting in the way, I would love for you to join me on my Instagram page at strong.moms.fitness or my Facebook group, the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast Group. Each day, I do a quick five-minute workout 
so that you have no time excuse that you can't fit a workout in. You're going to want to join me every single day for these quick five minute workouts. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast. See you next time. Thanks for tuning in. And we look forward to seeing you next time on the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast. Now remember, go subscribe so that you are the first to know as soon as new episodes drop. Also, be sure you don't miss out on your chance to win a free program of your choice from Strong Moms Fitness. All you have to do is leave a five-star review. Screenshot it before you submit and send it to Daisy at strongmomsfitness.com. Your review helps other people find our show. And as a thank you, once a month, we choose the review that makes us all warm and tingly inside and award that lucky lady a free program of their choice. So do it now. It could be you. See you next time, you badass mom you.